very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, my concern uh, about uh, uh, athlete compensation uh, has been focused less upon the 2% that are going to go into the pros and who could make a lot of money. I know there's a sense of, gee, it's just not fair that these very, very top uh, athletes are not getting paid their full market value. Uh, I recognize that. I, I appreciate that concern. My biggest concern has been the 98% who play on the football team or basketball team and are putting in uh, as much as uh, five, six, seven hours a day in practice and are never going to go on to the pros. Uh, and they're making an enormous sacrifice and, and are doing so uh, for the love of the sport and probably for hope that they'll be able to go into the pros. And it, it seems unfair that, that, that they have to uh, endure the, uh, the kind of sacrifice that they carry out without the prospect of, of additional compensation. I've spoken with the NCAA about that matter, and they say our challenge is that to provide any additional compensation to the members of these teams makes them effectively, under federal law, employees uh, and, uh, and therefore subject to employment law, which would mean they'd be subject to age discrimination uh, actions, wrongful termination. You could get cut by a team and sue the team. Uh, Mr. Huma, is, is your thought that these college athletes might appropriately be members of a union, join a union? Um, well, I think that, you know, if there are state laws and, and the NLRA um, that recognize their, their uh, you know, what they do as employees, they shouldn't be, not de be denied the rights under labor law. Um, but in terms of different models of compensation, um, there's many out there. I mean, players could receive money directly from the media outlets, which has nothing, has nothing to do with em uh, employee status, even the conferences or the association. There's ways to you know, really look at this and consider all of those uh, different aspects. So, um, again, I think that there are pretty realistic and easy models to to consider that don't get into some of the more challenging issues. They may not have full support of Congress, but, um, you know, what they do, obviously, you know, they're there to provide money for the university. They spend a lot of time, looks a lot like uh, workers. And, and so that that is a possibility as well. Yeah, no, I, I, I think the point is that I, I have a sense as to why the steelworkers is interested in this topic, which is this is the potential for some uh, a unionization of, uh, of college athletes, uh, which could be a real revenue generator for, for a union. Uh, and, and this, I think, is the reason why, and I, Senator Paul raised the question about why is the federal government looking at this? Uh, the NCAA has come to the federal government and said, look, we, we could solve this. But but we run up against all sorts of federal law and federal regulation. We need to have help to understand what you want us to do and guidance through the, this labyrinth, because obviously the colleges are not interested in having the athletes become union members to be subject to employment law, wrongful termination, uh, age discrimination, all the sorts of things that, that I, I think would make it very difficult to run an athletic program. Uh, I, I guess my own inclination is that the, the right course here uh, is to find a way to provide additional compensation to, to members of teams uh, for those that are the the two percent, if you will, uh, that that either they might be able to get name, image, and likeness, but limited to let's say fifty thousand dollars a year, no more than that, uh, or allow them to go pro. And you indicated that well, they can't go pro. Senator Murphy just indicated, gosh, they can't go pro in, in football. But but my guess is that it's going to be easier for football to change that. Uh, than, uh, and, and to follow more like the baseball model than for us to come up with a new law. So I wonder, uh, are, are we, would we satisfy uh, the concerns that you have if we, uh, if we indicated that, uh, look, we're going to increase the ability to compensate all the members of a team, not just the 2% that they go into the pros, uh, and that the, the very high earner potential, the 2%, uh, they might be able to get name, image, and likeness, but limited at something like uh, $50,000 a year. Does that work? And, and let me ask you. Uh, 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 Ms. Blank or Dr. Blank, uh, would a process of that nature work? And do you see the same concern that I'm describing? Um, I would oppose that type of thing that becomes a pay for play system. You know, I'm primarily an educational institution and I have 850 student athletes and I run those programs because I want those students to develop a set of skills that may not be developed in other classrooms. I want them to learn self-discipline, self-confidence. The same thing I hope they're learning and other students are learning as they're coming to college. And, um, you know, that that is about an educational process. As you say, the main benefit these students take away is their educational degree. It's not about coming here to earn money and to be an employee. So, um, no, I wouldn't agree with you that I think that's a good idea. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, Ms. Dennis? Senator, Senator Romney, thank you. The pro athletes, um, football players can go pro in college. They can't go pro uh, like uh, Mr. Yuma said from high school, but we're not interested really in for, for non-revenue sports and, and as well as I think for all of our um, student athletes, we're not interested in being professionals of a, of a university. You know, we're interested in being um, student athletes who gain from the educational experience. And if we started making um, all of our student athletes, you know, or have them go pro, our Olympic teams are gonna be decimated. You know, and I don't know if, if, if you thought about, you know, the feeding system that um, college athletes serves as um, uh, for our Olympic teams. You know, in 2016, the road to Rio ran right through the university system. There were 80% of our student athletes comprised our Olympic team. And of that, there were 555 members on the on Team USA and 436 of them came from, they were either incoming student athletes, current student athletes or former student athletes. So I'm not interested in that. I, I, I would ask the other panelists, but I can't, I can't go there given our time. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I return to you.